Hey there, it's Chris again. Uh, in this little video, I'm going to answer one of the most popular questions I get um, through the blog and the emails and messages. Um, I have a lot of people asking me, um, how do I just do some of the basic setups for a bass drum pedal? So, I figured the easiest way to address that question would be to shoot you a quick little video. Um, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to show you uh, some of the, just the basics um, on how to set up a single pedal, but even a, a double bass pedal. Um, what you do need to know, like a lot of things that if you wa watch my course or any of my lessons, um, this is another one of those that falls in that category of you got to play with some of the adjustments a little bit just to see what feels comfortable for you. Um, another thing you need to know is you can get into micromanaging every little thing and there's hundreds of little tweaks and things you could do to the bass drum pedal to make it feel comfortable. Um, but again, I'm just going to hit some of the basic uh, topics um, so you know how to if you buy a new pedal, how to do some adjustments so you can start to dial it in so it feels good to you. Okay? So let's jump in. Obviously, this is my bass drum pedal. All right. Um, you'll see the, the two beaters on it. That's because this is my double pedal. Uh, if you've never seen that before and you're wondering what on earth, how does this work? Right now, this, does, this second one does nothing. Um, the main one... Uh, is the only one that really works and does anything right now. If I hit that pedal, it's just that uh, beater right there, okay? This doesn't come into play until I hook up the second pedal. So we'll show you that in a second. Um, but uh, we'll dive in. Some of the, um, obviously, the most basic uh, adjustment that you can make really is your, your spring, um, adjusting the tension on that, okay? Um, they have these locks in here that um, move up and down. Um, the idea is to basically um, gives you a place to push also. If you want to tighten or loosen um, your spring, uh, you push down on that plate and you'll see it, it gives this uh, nut on the bottom here room to spin to either loosen or tighten. And the reason you want to push down on it is because uh, most pedals have a groove underneath. That nut falls right into place and is locked in so you can't spin it, you can't turn it. Um, and it's designed so with all the abuse that it's taking, you're, you're stomping the crud out of this thing. Um, that won't just start to come loose and then all of a sudden your spring's loose and bouncing everywhere. And uh, on some of my first drum sets, uh, I won't say cheaper, but less expensive uh, pedals that I had, that would happen. And you're sitting there playing along and all of a sudden what happens if this comes completely loose, there's no tension on it and it just falls straight forward. Uh, pedal all the way to the bottom and it's not bouncing back nothing and your beater is just lying up against your bass drum and it's a terrible terrible feeling so that's a great design it's something small but um, if you're looking for a uh, bass drum pedal that's definitely one of the small things that I would recommend seeing if it's got one of those little cutouts for that bottom nut so it doesn't uh, fall down on you okay another uh, very basic uh, adjustment is you see this uh, bolt right here what that does is allow you to uh, slide your beater up and down, okay? You can adjust the height, um, just like that. Uh, and again, find what feels comfortable for you. Um, some guys, you know, you want the, the beater shorter, um, some like it all the way extended. Um, I'm pretty much all the way out, and uh, that also means the beater is going to fall back further from the bass drum head Obviously, the higher you get it, the further it's going to be from that bass drum head. So it's got further to travel, but it packs a little more punch when it gets there, too. Um, not only can you uh, slide this up and down, but they also make these little, uh, they're little weights that uh, go right on the shaft of this. And it's a little balance thing. You know, you can, you can see what feels the best. You can move it down towards the bottom or all the way at the top. And again, you're, you're moving more weight, but when it hits, it's going to have more punch to it. So that's definitely one of the first things you got to play with and see what feels comfortable for you. Okay. Um, another thing that um, you get to decide when you start playing is if you want the chain or a lot of uh, drum pedals come with this uh, little strap. Okay. Nylon strap. And the biggest difference that I've noticed is there's a little more flex in the strap so it doesn't respond quite as fast as I like it um, but if you're not playing a lot of fast notes and you want a little more 
uh, natural feel to it, then um, you know I know a few guys that that use these and really love them. Um, again, it's a matter of taste. I, uh, I I stick with the chain because I like the way it feels, and there's no real give to it. Okay, uh, the strap you'll definitely get a little bit of give to it. All right. A um, couple of the other minor adjustments um, on this drum pedal. I don't know if you can see it very clearly here. There you go. Okay. Back here, you can see a, a groove. Um, you can take an Allen wrench tool, and um, depending on where you you loosen this up, and you can slide it up and down that groove. And what that would do is, in essence, slide this head, this uh, beater, either closer to the bass drum or further away. What you want to be careful of that you might not notice. Obviously, it has to do with the relation of the uh, the drum head, but it also messes with the angle that your footboard is. Okay, if it's further away, obviously it you can see it starts to lift that pedal up. Okay, um, opposite uh, is also true. If it's closer to that bass drum head, it's lower. So you might your foot just might not feel right. Believe me, I've played on somebody else's kit that has that adjusted, and just you know a few degrees feels like a world of difference, and it's just feels completely uncomfortable. So mess with that. You can slide this again. Slide it. Um, either further back um, or all the way forward, try and find what feels right for you, not only with relation to the bass drum head, but the angle of the pedal. Okay? Um, that's most of just the, the, the quick and simple um, adjustments. On this pedal, uh, another one you can do is, is right here on the top, it's the same deal. You can see the groove and you can slide the chain back. The further back you go, the further it's going to pull that uh, mallet forward. So if you combine both of these, you can theoretically get the mallet closer, but still keep that uh, the foot pedal where you like it. So again, that's one of those areas where you start to micromanage, and, and you can start to just spend hours and hours dealing with, I want my beater closer, but I really like my, my uh, footboard up a little higher. You can do it. You just got to play with it for a while. Okay? Um, something else I want to show you is you see these little knobs right here and you got one on the other side here what those are is spikes that stick out of the bottom it's kind of hard to see but what that does you can see hopefully that sticks out there um, there you go uh, what that does is digs into the carpet okay so you, are, you usually see drummers playing on a drum rug of some sort. Um, you really got to mess with these a little bit because what can happen if you get them too drastically sticking out, they're designed so when you're playing, your pedal isn't going to slide forward. Conversely, your bass drum isn't going to slide forward. What can happen though, um, whenever guys are starting out, they'll think, hey, I'm going to crank these things all the way out because um, I don't want my, my pedal going anywhere. What can happen is once you slide the rim of your bass drum in here, you see that? Your pedal can start to do that. Um, the weight of the bass drum will come down and you've just created a pivot point because you, you got your uh, spikes too, too far out. And whenever your bass drum's sitting on there, you're, you, it's actually sitting like this off the ground. So whenever you start to do the uh, doubles, um, if you watch my heel up uh, technique video, you see how you know you got your heel up, but you're trying to dig in and get those two notes. Do doom, do doom, do doom. Makes it so much harder with this is up because it's not solid. You got an extra bounce. It's flex. It's just sitting there, and as you're trying to hit it, it's doing that on you, bouncing, bouncing down on on the back of the pedal. It's a nightmare. It took me forever to figure out what in the world is going on. But if you ever come up to a drum set and you see the the bottom sticking up like that, first thing you need to do is hit those anchors. Cause look. Just with what I'm doing, you can see it's already bringing it down to the bottom, okay? So one of the key things to look for, that's a nightmare to deal with. So again, uh, really play with those a little bit, and you want to make sure that you get them out long enough to keep you from sliding, but you also want to make sure that heel part is still on the ground. Um, and most uh, high-end pedals nowadays also come with some of the Velcro on the bottom, and that's strictly designed to grab hold of carpet and help you uh, stay st stay stationary and not slide anywhere. Okay, 
So that's the basic uh, adjustments for single pedal. Um, a lot of people nowadays, including myself every now and then, use a double pedal. How that works is you get this little bar. It's got knuckles right here, okay? So it can flex and take all kinds of angles. Put one end on the post for this uh, secondary unit. Slide it all the way in, tighten it down, okay? And you can see what the principle of it is as this turns, that second mallet is now engaged. Okay, again, another micromanage thing. You can play with all the adjustments everywhere. You know, see what feels good because this is, again, your right foot and your left foot, snare drum's right here. You gotta see what feels comfortable as far as the width uh, between the two pedals, okay? Again, whenever you're adding this second pedal, a lot of things change. You also gotta think about where your hi-hat is. Okay, because the way these are designed, your hi-hat pedal goes right next to it. So the further you go out, the further you're pushing your hi-hat. Um, so now, instead of playing at a nice, comfortable spot, if you like your legs really wide, you're shoving this hi-hat way over here, doing stuff like that, okay? So it's one of the other things you gotta start thinking about if you decide to add a second pedal. Um, other than that, all the adjustments are the same. Uh, the spring, tension it's got the locking nut at the bottom and the uh, the flat nut on the top use the same thing you can push it down it has the um, instead of on the side the mat, the height adjustment is right here that nut slides it uh, up and down and again you can use those counterweights to find a uh, what feels comfortable um, the uh, chain is on this side as opposed to being right here over the pedal okay same deal it's got the uh, slot at the top so you can slide that chain back closer to you to raise your, uh, your pedal increase the angle but the spring uh, adjustment is on this side just how this one had the, the spring can slide forward or back and move your mallet either closer to the bass drum head or further back the spring adjustments on this side, but the uh, chain adjustments on this side. You have the same problem that you had with the uh, the primary unit. Um, you got to play with your the spikes. There's spikes on this as well, and same deal. If uh, you don't have the bass drum sitting on this, but what can happen is uh, whenever you're starting to lean on and press on it, if they're too high, you can cause that back to rise up, or if the floor is a little uneven. Uh, it's very common for the back to rise up, um, and it's just, it does not feel good at all. You'll, it's one of those things, as soon as you experience it, you'll say, remember Chris told me about this, and he was right, man, this feels horrible. Let me fix that right now, okay? Uh, that's pretty much it. Again, there's a million little tiny tweaks you can do, but that's the best way to get a decent angle on your pedal boards, on the foot boards, um, as well as the mallet uh, in relation to the bass drum head. And then you start playing with the tension of the springs, and then again make sure those spikes are out enough to keep you from sliding but they're in enough to keep you from lifting those heels off off the off the back uh, uh off the floor all right so there you go it's uh, not rocket science but it's definitely tedious if you want to dive in and try and get the perfect feel for your bass drum pedal so there you go hopefully that answers most of your questions but if you got any more go ahead and shoot them my way and i'll try and answer them as soon as i can see you next time